Oh, what's up everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. And uh, today we are fighting for manufacturing. We're bringing awareness. We got robots, we're making it happen. So check it out. Let there be light. All right, so uh, today we got some real cool things going on. First, we are going to uh, gotta go check out my guys in the shop and stuff and uh, see what's up. And then we're headed over to Mark Haney's place uh, where we're gonna be on the radio. We're gonna be talking manufacturing and uh, later on we have a visit from a little robot from Universal. It's gonna be awesome. Let me get my safety glasses right in. Ha, <laughs> you wanna see something funny? Shane, Shaney over here hiding. <laughs> What's up, it's just hiding. Oh man, check this out, check this out. You guys remember the lion, the titanium lion that we made for IMTS? Showing you guys how to actually machine titanium at crazy speeds and fees, giving you all the specs, the surface width, the chip load, the depths of cut, so you could bank that information, right? And here it is, living at our house right now. Oh, look behind the teeth, so cool. Oh, it's so smooth. What's really cool is we just made these stands out of four by four square tubing. Actually made a platform. Check that out, you got the Mighty Bite big old fixture plate we use. Lock it, rotate it on the five axis. So we're just showing it off. And oh, look at this, look at this. It's a chest bore, boom. So we got a stand for that also. That's the fixture, right? Underneath it, oh, look it, look. Look, oh man, we got some acrylic right there and you can actually see inside it. So you can see where the bolts go through this fixture and they go boom, 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 like all up here. See it? And that's our big thing, education, right? Just, just show you guys how to actually do it so you guys can bank that information. You can utilize it when you have your own application and it warrants it, right? So, oh, love it, love it. What's up, Nicole? Oh, what's up, what's up? This is Nicole over here, making it happen on the Tor Mac. Oh, oh, what is this? This is our puzzle piece for Autism Awareness. Isn't that awesome? So this series is for the Titan Kids series, right? For like seven-year-olds, nine-year-olds. Yeah. And this is just one of the cool projects, and, and Nicole is actually making all the parts. Yeah. So you have like a Frenchie, you have a cat, Dog now you got the, yeah, the dog bone. Yeah. And then you actually have a puzzle piece. He has no autism, it's special to me. I got two sons that are in the spectrum and stuff. And uh, let's bring awareness. Check that out. Autism awareness. Now kids all over the world can make these puzzle pieces, put them together. And people ask like, what is that? Autism awareness. And they start talking about it. Right. Aren't you Boom. supposed to be on the radio show? Oh, radio show, like in a couple of minutes. I just gotta go check some things out. I'll see you later. We are headed over to Mark Haney's studio over here in Rockland, California, down the street from my shop. And we're gonna get on the radio and we're gonna talk manufacturing. And now I am here with Titan Gilroy. He is a man of so many talents. Uh, he's Titans of CNC. He's, uh, he's building a media empire. I have a lot of complaints about education and the lack of manufacturing education, the lack of money, right? And uh, today we get to voice our opinion. Hi there. Hi, how are you? Well, who do you view as competition? A lot of people have had to add competition, but you're doing something so different. Yeah. Do you have competition? Uh, really, I have. We, I would say, we do not have any competition. Period. You know that there's standards for everything that you do when it comes to education, and yet five-axis machining, multi-axis tombstones, all these different things that a lot of people don't know that actually build our country. There are no standards in place, period. We just decided, you know what, let's, let's not so much play nice with everybody. We're cordial, you know, yes. but at the same time, let's build our own standards and show people how it needs to be to actually compete and make money. And although I don't have a huge amount of faith in, you know, politicians and their ability to get things done when it comes to manufacturing, I think we've been making a pretty loud voice and we've been showing people that, you know, 
manufacturing is a solution. It's a solution to actually um, help our veterans. We're selling out their jobs, right? So what if we actually bring opportunity and give them good jobs? You got a million kids with autism, they're gonna be turning 18 and it's like, where are they gonna work? You know, I mean, these are conversations we need to have because manufacturing is the key, right? So, you know, people talk about, oh, we need to get people out of prison. Well, let's get people not to go in prison by giving them opportunity before they actually go. Let's build schools and fight for those jobs and, and get the big cell phone companies and big technology companies to start making things right here in America so that we can put people to work. Why do you think your message resonates so much today with at the high school level or even in San Quentin or the other prisons that you're doing work in? Well, I think that we're bringing like a, a, a real solution to a problem. You know, I know that education uh, just in California, they get $500 million, right? But 86 or 87% of all inmates are actually gonna, when they get out, they're gonna come back within five years to prison. They're re committing crimes, they're hurting people because the prisons aren't teaching them a valuable, viable trade. We actually took our third season, went into San Quentin prison and built an actual school, Titans of CNC, our own school from the experience that we had and built a curriculum so these guys could get out and get $30 an hour, $40 an hour jobs. I think that, you know, when you look at a lot of our kids, right? Everybody's like, all the counselors are pushing towards college and stuff, but the way the internet is changing, the way society and technology is changing, there's just so much opportunity in manufacturing. And I truly believe that the people who are making the decisions and pushing the kids, they don't believe in manufacturing. Therefore, the kids don't get educated that, hey, manufacturing is a viable trade. And then that same kid, you know, possibly doesn't go to college. You know, what I'm saying is that, hey, you know, you don't have to go to college. You can actually walk into manufacturing based on determination and talent and skill and, and your workmanship. You can actually make a good living. You can buy a house. You can like, you know, take care of your bills and stuff. Advice to entrepreneurs, right? There's so many people out there that um, are thinking about chasing their dream or the beginning stages. Advice to that next guy in line. You know, I, I would say, you know, everybody has a gift. And you gotta like look at that gift and you gotta be bold in it. I really try to figure out things that are like close to myself and that my gifts work with and I go to actually help those types of people. So if you're trying to do something and that's not who you are, it will probably fail. So who are you? What are the experiences you have? What are you qualified for? Figure it out and figure out something that's tangible, that's real and fight for it. And when everybody says, oh, you can't do it, don't listen to them because that, nobody's gonna share your same dream. If that's you, you gotta fight for it, you gotta walk it, you gotta be bold in it and you gotta like, just make it happen. Another thing that I'll say is that, you know, there are a lot of people in manufacturing that are trying to like do things and stuff. You know, you got these schools popping up, but to actually get our country excited about it, you gotta do something at scale. You gotta do something massive, right? You guys have seen like, we put out like a crazy plan for the city of Chicago. Nobody can solve that problem and yet it's so easy. You just have to bring opportunity. You need to do it at scale. You need to give these kids an opportunity and teach them about it when they're young. And then all of a sudden you'll see all those families fighting and locking arms around that opportunity because they want their kids to grow up and actually do something with their lives, right? So when you look at Chicago and Baltimore and Oakland, there's so much opportunity here. And instead, we keep building prison. So let's get them before they go to prison. What's the big dream for uh, Titans of CNC, your, your, uh, your enterprise that you're building? I think in life, if you can uh, build a company and, and take care of your family, and do it on a foundation of serving your community and serving your trade, then I think you've been incredibly successful. So Check this out. We just had a little visitor over here at the shop, right? A little robot, like a little baby. Oh, and uh, Stuart, he actually went and actually programmed it in a couple of minutes without having any training. And basically you can just grab this thing, move it around, boom, boom, program it. If it bumps you, it stops, right? So you don't need the big cages anymore. It's actually pretty crazy, the technology, they're becoming so easy, right? But I have a question for you guys. Like we we're teaching CAD, CAM, and CNC machining 
on our academy. We're teaching the fundamentals. We're teaching GDNT, metrology, like all of it, right? We're teaching you how to actually build a company, how to get work, and just everything CNC. And uh, what do you guys think about robotics? Like, I don't want to do something, and then you guys are like, Titan, that's not what we want, blah, blah, blah. It is the future. It allows us to compete. I've already seen, like, when we, we saw Zooks with the autonomous car. I mean, they're using robots to actually build cars in San Francisco. Without robotics, you probably wouldn't be able to actually make these parts. And a lot of the jobs would just be done overseas, right? So robotics allows us to keep jobs here. You know, you need service technicians to actually maintain the robots. You need programmers to program the robots and stuff. So what do you guys actually think about us doing a robot training programming course on the academy for free to show you guys actually how to do it? What do you guys think? I'd love to see your comments down below. I've always been fascinated with robots. I believe it's the absolute future. I just believe it's important for us to actually perfect and utilize that technology, that robotic technology, so that we can actually keep jobs here and we can actually make parts that previously were impossible to make, right? You couldn't do it efficiently, but because of robots, you actually can, right? And another thing about robots is like, you know, you need a service technician to take care of them. You need programmers to program them. And um, I've always said it, instead of a uh, hundred people, at 100 shops in the future you'll have 20 to 30 people at 100,000 shops so things just kind of shift right but anyway I, I value your opinion do you guys want to see us give you free robot training on the academy put your comments down below thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today you guys came to the radio station with me so we can bring awareness to cnc education uh checked out the robot boom 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 we are out. I will see you on the next vlog. If you love what we're doing, if you love the vlogs, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you love this video. And uh, put your comments below. And uh, if you want us to teach you something, write it in the comments. You might see it in a future vlog, right? I will see you guys later. Boom.